Welcome back to Faith Speaks as we visit with Around Town with Father, well, I should say Monsignor, Father Anthony from the Diocese of Manchester who's come up today and this is part two of a, a conversation we started <clears throat> and the real reason I got him here obviously is to talk about Lent. We're in the season of Lent and a lot of people don't understand what Lent is. And uh, I, even myself, before I joined the church, I used to see it in the newspaper. First Sunday in Lent, or third Sunday in Lent, and uh, can't eat meat on Fridays. And uh, why, why did they ever stop? That For a while, even when I went to school, it was always fish on Fridays. Then they stopped. Sure. Yeah. But now it's just during Lent. You can't eat yeah. meat. I think after the Second Vatican Council, there was a uh, a time where they wanted to relax some of the what were considered rigorous practices of the Catholic Church um, to and then relegate those practices to seasons, so particular times. So I think the motivation was, you know, that because if you did it every single week all year long, it can become mundane. So in, in order to enhance the actual practice of prayer and penance and almsgiving, fasting, uh, I think it was decided that, you know, let's let's make it that particular time, Lent, 40 days in Lent, really drive it home that that's a time of sacrifice and prayer and penance. So I think that's probably, that was one of the motivations. Although in many parts of the world, uh, in many old-time Catholics now, and not so old-time Catholics, still practice a bit of uh, abstinence on oh, Fridays. Yes, yes. Fish on Fridays, no meat. Uh, many, I know many Catholics too that still fast and abstain on Wednesdays and Ash Fridays. Ash Wednesday, wow, well, especially yeah. Ash Wednesday. Yeah, all during the year. But particularly Ash Wednesday and the Fridays of Lent and Good Friday, of course. Mm. Uh, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday are uh, fasting and abstinence days. Mm. Uh, and then Fridays during Lent abstaining from from uh, from meat of course and from all those things we don't need any kind of luxuries uh, the whole effort in the 40 days of Lent is to die to self so sort of prepare your heart and soul your bodies even for the great Paschal feasts mm. um, and so uh, those you know as we know from the gospel Jesus right after he was baptized in the Jordan River, went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and was tempted by the devil. He abstained, he fasted from food, he was hungry. And all of which was to sort of come out of that desert experience uh, more powerful, more imbued with God's uh, powerful spirit. And that's when he began his public ministry when all the miracles were happening and he, he praying and could preach with great power and authority. So um, the church asks Catholics to uh, delve into this 40 days of Lent um, with a real spirit of prayer and penance and almsgiving, giving self-sacrificing, dying to yourself so that you can rise with Christ. That's the whole idea. It's a sort of a paradigm of, of good living, you know, and it's a paradigm that um, a paradigm and a paradox, I would say. It's, a, it's sort of a model for the way we should live our lives, uh, even in relationship with one another. Because the great um, paradox of true love and true faith is that the more of life you give away, the more you end up having, right? Mm, mm. And we know this is true. This is, a, this is one of those human truths that, that just hits us every so often. Like, for example... Uh, when a young couple first falls in love, right? They know that paradox very in a rich way, in a deep way. And at first it's romance. Uh, it can be um, kind of emotional, you know. They give themselves away so that they can have more. And they say to each other on their wedding day, um, I'm going to give my whole self away to you at, at my word. That's all I have. Hmm. But you give it away, nothing else to show because love that deep and that strong isn't like the Dow Jones or the stock exchange. No, you can't predict it. Yeah. So you've got to trust. And uh, to be able to trust in God uh, takes something. There's a winnowing away of, of, of oneself. It's a dying to self that mm. enables you to trust more. And that's why the crucifix 
is such a great symbol for us because Jesus had to trust the relationship with the Father mm. without stretched arms. But and there's another question, okay? Now, we supposedly have Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday. Mm -hmm. Then you have Good Friday, okay? That supposedly is when Jesus was on the cross mm -hmm. and died on the cross, right. okay? And was placed in the tomb. So now they claim three days later he has risen. Mm -hmm. Well, in my book, that'd be Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Right. But yet we celebrate Easter on Sunday, Easter Sunday. How do you get your three days that fast? Well, I think that the, my read of it is he dies on Good Friday. Yeah. On the third day, he rose from the dead. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Not in a, so I think you could interpret it either way. You could say three days after Good Friday or including Good Friday. And I think they include Good Friday. Clearly, they do. I don't mean to put you yeah. on a, on a, on a yeah. thing, spot, but that's questions I've right. had. And I think you it's know? a legitimate it's like, question, sure. You know, it's, it's, it's questions I have. How can you, how can, I don't get it, you know? Yeah. And yes, I've been coming out with more and more movies now yes. about this. Now, for a while, you would never see anything on this big screen or whatever about mm. Jesus. Now, now all of a sudden, they got another one this year. It's coming out this week, I think. I saw, week. The, I saw it, Risen. Yes. It's a very fine film. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, I, I just can't understand, try to understand this thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, then you go to, was it 40 days after that, when he finally goes, to, rises up to heaven. Right, uh, the Ascension. The Ascension. Right? Yeah. And then we have, what? No, and then the uh, Pentecost, Pentecost comes after that. 50 days after, yeah. He was what's, really... what's Pentecost? That's when uh, Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit de descends upon yes. the apostles okay. and Mary in the upper room. Yep, yep. And, you know, after the uh, resurrection, the disciples are living behind locked doors in mm. the upper room because they're fearful of persecution. Yeah. And so uh, it's only after the Holy Spirit comes upon them that they're able to break out of the, that room and start to go preach the gospel and build the church at great cost, great risk to their own lives. But because of that empowering of the Holy Spirit, they're unafraid, whereas before they were afraid. Mm. So it's a wonderful um, experience and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit is, is real and active. And certainly we, we could say that, you know, the church is imbued with the power of the Holy Spirit. I happen to believe that the, the, the fact that the church is still existing today after so many uh, I know. thousands of years is proof that the Holy Spirit is in charge. Mm. And then the other thing, too, I get this Easter thing. And then um, one question is, uh, when they, what happened to St. Joseph? Joseph, his father. What, we never hear nothing about him. He only appears in the infancy narratives yeah, in the and Gospels. And you never hear no, what, what no. happened to him. That's it. He kind of goes off the scene, and I. It's, well, scripture scholars could s surmise that he died. Uh, he might have been an older man. He could mm. have been married prior. Mary could be his second wife. He was. He put, could have been a widower. Yeah, that's plausible. Yeah, and um, in any case, uh, it's probably the the fact that he died before Jesus really grew up and began his public ministry, mm. so that. Uh, now we have images in the cathedral church where I, where I serve now uh, of the images of the death of Joseph. So you have Joseph on his deathbed with Mary, his mother, Mary and uh, Jesus as a man with him. But those uh, come from the tradition of the church, not from scripture. See, I've never seen that. Yeah, there's no uh, scriptural reference to Joseph after, um, after he's about 12 years old when he gets lost in the temple, mm. you know? Mm. And uh, we often read that gospel on the Feast of the Holy Family, so the, sun, the mm. Sunday after Christmas. And uh, so you go from the birth to him being about 12 oh, years I old. Oh, I know, yeah. You know? It, and that's yeah. the same, same way during the uh, Christmas season, 12 days, we jump from the day he was born to New Year's when they have the Holy Family. Right. And then you jump back to yeah. when he was bat when, right, when the three the wise men came. That's right, it's true. And I yeah. said, this is so, I said to yeah. Father Ray, I said, this is so confusing. Yeah. 
You know, because all of a sudden you jump to it. And I said, wait a minute here. How'd that happen? Yeah. And then you go back. It doesn't make sense to me. But yeah. And then, of course, you know, as you say, when he goes to heaven and he rises up and mm-hmm. Mary supposedly rises up, she does. And, yes. You know, it's a, it's a real confusing. Well, and they're very, they're difficult mysteries to grasp, particularly these days, because mm. yeah. they, they're so fantastic and, and you know, so... Uh, out of the ordinary, I think in the old days. Although today, I mean, with all that we can do technologically, it might it sh- it shouldn't be so much of a stretch to imagine these things. But um, I found in the I, I watched the movie Risen last week, and which was very well done. The only thing I would be critical of is at the very end when uh, they do have the ascension of the Lord, mm. and. Uh, it was really too Hollywood at that point. Oh, it was yes, too fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I thought they, if they could have done it in a more subtle way, have him just walk off mm. and fade out. And then maybe at the very end, have him just rise up a little bit and then cut it out. Yeah. But this was like an explosion and lights and everything. Mm. And it, it really kind of... Yeah. It didn't, well. yeah, it didn't go over well. Because I bought, I bought it, uh, I, uh, I wouldn't say a statue, but I have a thing of St. Joseph I just bought the other back a couple of weeks ago. It's, you know, I have the Holy Mother Cross, Mary, and then I have a couple of saints. And I said, uh, the people hit the bookstore, I said, who's this guy? And they said, well, this is just as Joseph. I said, oh. So, and he only had one. I said, I'll buy him. I said, because I've never really seen anything about him. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And in con- I've always been very protective of the crush because Concord, there was a story, and I'll tell you someday off camera, but they were going to do away with it here because oh, yeah. vandals had ruined the stable. Yeah. And I found out about it secretly. And the organization I belonged to is the Grange. And so I asked, I went to a special meeting they were having. It was, a secret, it was supposed to be a secret meeting and they were going to do away with it. And I said, how about giving it to us? We want it. Yeah. We want to save that building. We want to save the crash because it's been on the Statehouse Plaza for so many years. Mm. Well, they hemmed and hawed for about an hour, but they didn't give it to us. Oh, yeah. And we saved it, and of course, yeah. it's much smaller right. than it was. And the Knights of Columbus joined in with us a few years after the Grange had got it. Mm-hmm. And so now we both sponsor it. That's but, wonderful. Uh, oh, I'm happy to hear that because something well, similar happened in Manchester. Yeah. They always had a public oh, I know. in Victory Park, right yes. near the cathedral. Yes. A big one. Yep. And they took it away, and I've been trying to find out where it is. Is it in a warehouse somewhere? No, it's cause... just down on the... Well, they've got some of it down yeah. on the... Uh, in front of the Radisson Hotel. Okay, that's the one. That's the okay. one. Okay, all right, yeah. But it's changed. Yeah. And I noticed this year that a lot of the figurines are not with it like they used to have. Yeah. Because they used to be just like Boston's on right. the common down yeah, there. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And it's sad to see how they kind of made it, to me, cheesy looking. Yeah, yeah, it's not as nice as it used to be. Yeah. Why do we have the difference for Easter so? Because... The Orthodox are a month this year. They're like a month after we are. Right. Why? Why? why Last the change? Last year they were the same. Yeah. Well, it's all because of the calendar. You know, they don't like go by the the same calendar that we do liturgically, oh. and it's it's just from the tradition. You know. That's what it is. Yeah, and so, uh, but last year, I think it was last year, we had Easter the same time. We did. Yeah. Which and is I, nice. It's kind of nice. And I thought that they were going to do that for for, for good. Then they were, they had decided they were going to do that. But then this year, it's just yeah, different. Yeah, I'm not sure if but, they've gotten uh, to that point. But I know. was very happy to see though when Pope Francis met with the the the, the Russian. Oh, uh, that was historic, wasn't it? I thought it was very nice that he did that. Some people were criticizing him, but I think it was nice. Well, no pope has been successful in meeting with this patriarch. Yeah, over in over a thousand years. So, I think it's it was wonderful. It was, and you know, it's not going to solve all the problems, no. but it's a beginning. It's a beginning. And you know, if we don't talk to each other, I know how are we ever going to fix anything. I know if we don't talk to each other. And of course, I had I met a real nice priest here in Concord. He was from the Greek Orthodox, and now he got transferred. He's in Boston, as far as I know. His name is Father Dimitri, mm-hmm. and we used to have great conversations. I can't stand lamb. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't like it either. I can't take it. And he says, oh, Dick, he says, I'll fix you some lamb. You'll never know it's lamb. I said, well, I, I doubt it. <laughs> and then, of course, he got transferred to Boston. But have you ever been to the Holy Land? I've never been to the Holy Land. See, I And have... I'm embarrassed to say that because I lived in Rome for five years. And it, it would have been an easy jaunt over there, but I never had the opportunity to go. But see, I have no interest in Jerusalem. No. Not at all. Bethlehem is where I want to go. Yeah. I want to go to Bethlehem mm -hmm. just to see yeah. where Jesus could have been born. Yes. You know, and just to feel it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerusalem, yes, it's nice, but I just, I guess for all the trouble that's over there, yeah. it's sad that it is. Oh, but terrible. I still would like to see Bethlehem. Oh, sure. And, you know, but... Uh, the Church of the Nativity there and... Uh, yes. That's and it's the, all... But, it, I mean, they're all so close by. I mean, it's yeah. it's wonderful. So, if you ever do get to go. I'd like to go myself, but I'm I have to... I'm a little leery myself of yeah. going. Yeah, you time. have to be. I yeah. am... I mean, even here it's bad enough now with all the, all the violence that's going on. I yeah. mean, but... Yeah. You know, uh, I just don't understand how people, and it's like what you said earlier on the other show about the presidential campaigns, how downright dirty they are. Yeah. This is the worst I've ever seen it. It is. It's really bad. You know, and yeah. I, I don't know. I really don't know what's happening, but it doesn't give you a good feeling. No. Of what's to come if some, if certain ones get in and... Yeah, and what about the youth of today? They talk yeah. about the youth coming into the church. Mm. I would think it. I don't know how they. I, I. I don't know. I just really. It's a tough time, in every way. Uh, it's it's a tough time. I think for the church, it's a tough time for culture, and um, in particular in New Hampshire, we're living in a very. I mean, I think New Hampshire has been rated one of the most godless parts of the country. Yeah. And so, you know, we have got our work cut out for us. And, uh, but it's, you know, I, I keep telling myself and I tell friends, you know, I, it's not my job to fix this. God will mm. fix it. And if I can be his instrument in helping things along, great, sign me up. But I'm not going to put the pressure on myself to fix these, uh, these ills of society and, um, uh, all I can do is my level best to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, living and reigning now and forever, St. Paul says, and uh, try to walk the walk because I mm. think that's really important. I mean, integrity um, is everything right now. That's what we're lacking so, in so many quarters mm. in our culture, even in our politics. Oh, I know. The lack of integrity is just astounding oh, to I me. Know. And it's coming out in, in a multitude of ways, but... Um, but I think as, as leaders, community people, it's really incumbent upon us to, to try harder to make sure we're walking this walk for the sake of the people that we serve, whether it's in public office or in religious life. Um, because so much damage has been done, and we've seen the results of uh, when we've not done that. Yeah. We paid a heavy price. You know, I've, I mentioned it to you on the phone, and I know we talked talk to Father Ray many times about it, is that somehow the church is not willing to bend on a few things. And like this here, my I can't drink wine right, because of the medications that I'm on. I don't drink any alcohol at all. Never had right. Only a little bit I did. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know, why couldn't they offer a non-alcoholic? thing but they they can't I go that this is cooler than my right. water but at least right. I could yeah. feel like I have something right you know they sure. won't allow that yeah but you know it's too bad but mm. I just find sometimes but no I really another thing too is the diaconate I'm glad they brought really I, back in 1991 I was doing licensing for motor vehicle for a few years and I was assigned over to Epping and Salem. And over there I met a retired priest. He was uh, a good, I think they said he just passed away, he was around 100 years old. He was an Irishman. And uh, he had me all talked into going to be a deacon. I said, Wow. And I said, I, re I really felt the call. Now people are going to laugh at this and say, Dick Patton, I don't think so. They don't know what's inside of me. Great, would love to have you. 
But they, yeah. but oh, my wife says, oh, I know. Oh, she was furious when she found out that I wanted to become one. Oh, really? But I just felt a calling sure. there. You know, mm-hmm. I was really into it. I was reading a lot, studying it. But I know it is a big commitment. It is, yeah. And uh, but I'm glad for those who can go through it, yeah. and do it. But you know, I yeah. Just... Thank God for those guys because and their wives who are so. Yes, uh, right. Because they do so much now. I mean, I rely heavily on my deacon at my parish, and, mm. uh, and he's just great. Um, well, when you say parish, what are you talking about? I'm I'm the rector of the cathedral in Manchester. Oh, that's what I thought you were yeah. at the cathedral. Yes. So, okay. And also St. Hedwig. So I've got two churches. But doesn't yeah. the bishop do any masses at all? The bishop typically comes the first Sunday of every month. So for the ten thirty mass. Or is he any other time? Then he goes. He usually oh. goes around to different churches oh, okay. throughout the diocese. Uh, the rest of the time, or visits the prison. Like yesterday, he was at the Concord State Prison. Oh, really? And made a wonderful visit to the men there and had mass with them. Uh, so, because yeah, but I, one once this month, and then he comes, of course, for Holy Week and any major feast days. Yeah. So you do the washing of the feet during Lent. Yeah. Uh, you should say that on Holy, Holy Thursday. Yeah. yeah. I've had that done twice to me. I was very honored. Oh yeah. When I was asked. It's a powerful moment. It is. Know, it really is. is. Yeah. And of course, I ha- I feel bad because I do wear a brace on my right foot and I have a hard time walking. But I'm determined. I'm going to make it up there. Good for you. Good. But it was. I was really honored when they, the first year they had they asked for volunteers and they come to me and I said yes. Then I said. Is it possible to do it again? Because mm-hmm. I just felt that, you know, yeah. for the second year, I filed a race, sure. Well, then somebody else. Anyway, then last night, he got me sure I was back there again. Good. But, oh, that's great. But I just think it's a, it's a, it's, to me, that's a real powerful uh, feeling or something, mm. you know, to be that way. It I, is. I mean, it's a wonderful <clears throat> expression of uh, humility and, um, and that Jesus did that for his disciples, and and that the Holy Father now is is again giving an example of he washes the feet of prisoners on Holy Thursday. Yeah, you know? it's mm-hmm. a wonderful sign. Um, so see, I been, see you eventually. I see you as a bishop. Well, if that happens, wear your ice skate stick. It'll be a cold day. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, I can't skate with my feet, so... But I do. I yeah. really feel it talking to you here. And I have nothing against the other priests. I don't know a lot of women here. We have great priests here. But I oh. just feel that you have really got the knowledge and the uh, the feeling that you present that you would make an excellent bishop. If well, you're yeah, very kind to comes. say it, but uh, we don't... We'll, we'll see what the Holy Spirit has in mind, but I think that I'm very pleased to just be a parish priest. Well, don't we still have Bishop Odor still alive? I was with him today. Because I never mentioned him in Mass. He used to mention him in Mass every every time. Now you never hear his name. Because, well, typically in the Mass, the ritual calls for the the mention of the ordinary, the current bishop, and his auxiliary bishop. So, but some priests still include Bishop McCormick and Bishop Odor, who are retired now. So, um, so, you know, it's not wrong to include them all. but So, basically, there's no set limit on being a bishop. You can be in it till you die, or just if you want to be in it for a few years, I'd say. Oh, no, no. You're, 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 when, you're bishop, when you're ordained a bishop, it's a lifelong, you're, it's a character change, it's a sacrament. So, you are a bishop for your, the rest of your life. And then at 75, oh, okay. you must retire, but you're still a bishop oh, in, in, okay. in substance, you know, yes. and not in function, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Bishop Odor is ninety-four. Oh my goodness! I took him today to celebrate Mass with the retired priests in Manchester at Peterson House, Bishop Peterson House, mm. and uh, we had a nice, uh, a nice morning. And he's doing remarkably well. Oh, uh, it's incredible. Good. That's good. Yeah, for his age. And, now, and then I see the the seminarians coming up. You know, and it's funny because if, if you wanted to, uh, wanted to donate some funds or whatever see what they needed to help them through mm. they don't answer you oh you're kidding nope you when and you write that when you'd write to them yep 
That's not good. And, you know, even if I, I realize it may not be $1,000 or $100, but... But it, every, any gift, know, and every it, gift should be gratefully accepted and, and pursued, and actually. And that's happened before. And I thought, oh. gee, why would I bother giving if they're not going to acknowledge anything? Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll, I, I'm going to raise that back at the home office, if you don't mind, because I think that's important. Yeah, and the other thing, yeah. too, is I've talked to the bishop. He comes to the legislature once every two years. Yeah. And I mentioned the other day about, I said, you should just pop in sometime. Because you still see people taking their host and dipping. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, oh, they're not supposed to do that. And yeah. I said, well, now they are. <laughs> yeah. Not many, but there's still a few diehards. Yeah. That, but. yeah, but at one time, that they did do that, you know, and so... When we change like that, it's not so easy for the people to know mm. that they're not supposed Again, we, we presume they know, but they don't. And so we can't get mad at the people. You know, we, have, no. to help, we have to help them. Because I go to 430 here on Saturday. I, I myself, I'm a traditionalist. Yeah. And I like the hymns. Okay. Yeah. I don't like the rock, Christian rock music. I don't uh -huh. like it. Yeah. And that's what they have on Sunday at four and even right. St. John's, I guess, or whatever. But mm -hmm. I, myself, I like to hear like the old time, like here I am, Lord. Yeah. I love it. And I'm the same yeah, way right. myself. I prefer that. Uh, I think the church in some way should try to be, you know, all things to all people in a way, you know, mm. in the sense that, you know, it's a big church. We Catholic means universal, right? Mm. So, uh, so we have to, but but I think, um, yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm I'm much more traditional in my approach to the liturgy and to music. Mm. I really am. Well, we're coming down to a close of the show, and I really, really thank you for agreeing to do a second show. Thank today. you, Dick, and to Ian as well, because I'm not sure what he, what he had planned. We had a third show planned today, but they didn't. They backed out. But but as the more I thought about it today. Uh, to stay up with stay there, I said, you know, I said, there's so much this time of year. Yeah. With St. Patrick's Day and with Lent, especially Easter coming sure. up. Yeah. You know, it saddens me that they've made Easter like Christmas so commercial. Yes. Yes, you know. I know. What would you like from the Easter Bunny? What's he going to bring yeah. you? Nice big, yeah, okay. Yeah. I haven't seen many rabbits running around with these baskets on, on their paws, but yeah. anyway, but. But the yeah. good news is, like with this film coming out, and every year, there's a there's a lot of attention given, even mm. by Hollywood, to the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah, a lot of articles and so forth. Many of them are 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 poised to try to discredit the resurrection. Sure. However, they also help to lift up what our faith is all about, and maybe, yeah. and I think in that regard, maybe there's some good fruit that sure. can come out of it. Well, with that in mind, we want to thank you again, and uh, thank you to my director, and don't forget to listen to Hope Catholic Radio, 102.7 FM, and also to, as you're doing, around town as well, and uh, you keep safe out there, have a great day, and thank you to Father Monsignor Father Anthony, and... Uh, Thank you, Dick. And keep safe and have a happy Easter, and uh, we'll look forward to having you again as a, as a guest. Sure, anytime. God Great. bless you. Thank you. God bless you, too. And uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll talk with you soon on Faith Speaks.